What up, it's Chris from LaserLemmy.com, and I am not in front of the camera because I still don't know where my camera is. As soon as I find it, you're going to see my pretty handsome young face again. But anyway, I digress. Let's talk about Microsoft. Let's talk about Xbox. Let's talk about Phil Spencer. Philly Spence, he's the head of Xbox, and he's been shaking the Xbox game up since he became the boss. The last boss sucked. He's a much better person. He uh, brings the Xbox brand. He makes it a little bit more palatable for people like me who are not so keen on a Microsoft-ruled industry. So he's been talking. He's been doing some interviewing. And people have been asking him a lot of questions. One of them being, yo, is the Xbox no longer going to matter? Because Xbox games are now hitting the PC. Don't know if you heard, but Rise of the Tomb Raider is on PC. That next uh, Remedy game, Remember Me. I think that's what it's called. It might not be called that. I think that might be another game altogether. But uh, by the guys who made Alan Wake. Uh, that game is also hitting the PC. It was originally going to be an Xbox exclusive. That other game by the uh, former retro developers is also hitting the PC now. It was an Xbox exclusive. I can't remember the title of that game. I'm being very professional right now. I understand that. Anyway, I digress some more. So he's been talking and he said that... Uh, as the core features and software of Xbox are made available on Windows 10, so too will the Xbox become more like a PC. So you could see that Microsoft is kind of envisioning the Xbox and the PC to be more of a, a package deal. Uh, they want Xbox games to run on PC, they want PC games to run on Xbox, and they want all these games to run on your tablet and smartphone too. It's all going to, in the end, in their head, just be one device and probably one service. I'll get more on that in a bit, but let's keep going. They've also talked about how the Xbox itself, the Xbox One, might not just be the Xbox One, it might be the Xbox 1.1, Xbox 1.2, and so on and so forth. Because he mentioned something about, you know, in the future they'd like the to get the system smaller and cheaper. And there's also the idea of the Xbox console becoming more like a smartphone in its business model, meaning a new console every year. You know, the iPhone, the Samsung Galaxies, the HTC Ones, they always have a new version of their phone every year. So there would be a new Xbox every year. And just like every iPhone, your new iPhone can pretty much play all the games your old iPhone could play. So you'd be getting enhanced hardware that was backwards compatible with all the games. So the new Xboxes would play the same games that your old Xbox could play, just at, with better graphics. Kind of like the way a PC works now. So it aligns with what he's saying about the Xbox and the PC kind of being one in the same. So that's an idea. And so people uh, are saying that, you know, maybe this is going to be the same business model. Maybe people are going to be leasing their Xboxes for about 24 months, two years. Two years to pay off an Xbox, a new Xbox, and you get a new one every year, or every two years. So you're going to get better graphics every two years, and Microsoft's just going to have you on lock. They probably are looking very closely at the phone model business and thinking, why aren't we doing that? Why are we sitting, letting people sit on old hardware for eight years. That's what they did with the Xbox 360. I mean, granted, nobody who had an Xbox 360 at launch was playing that same Xbox 360 eight years later because that shit died at least three or four times. I'm exaggerating a little bit, not exaggerating it enough for some people. I digress some more. So that's a very lucrative idea for Microsoft, and they would love for you to be buying a new system every two years because that means you're constantly paying Microsoft. They are constantly getting money from hardware, which they're not doing right now. If you buy an Xbox One, you're good to go for the most part. So all they're getting money from is Xbox Live Gold, which granted is pretty lucrative in its own. But they're also getting money from uh, game licenses. They get money on pretty much every game sold. Now, they are seeing, you know what, we're Microsoft, we're rich, greedy bastards, we could be making more money. So, this would be a very lucrative, again, a very lucrative idea. They could make a lot of money, and Microsoft likes money. They like their shareholders to like money and be happy as well. So, this also ties in with a couple of other things. Because there was rumors recently, uh, over the last year or so, that the Nintendo NX might also have this similar idea behind it. You might be able to upgrade every year or so. 
Uh, and Sony is also going through uh, similar things as far as I can tell because the uh, PlayStation Now service, it's not super popular, hasn't taken off a lot, but I've talked about this a little bit. Sony, I believe, envisions the PlayStation to be going down a similar path. Perhaps not uh, the exact same. They might not be trying to get you to buy new hardware every two years, at least not in the same fashion. I believe Sony wants you to stream all of your games in the future. They want the PlayStation just to be a brand and a service so that you'd be paying for PlayStation now essentially every month, every year, whatever, and you'd be playing it on your smart TV, your computer, whatever. And I think uh, this is definitely the direction we're going. If the NX doesn't do something like that, and I think it might, uh, I think Nintendo will be the last to get on this train. But I think this is a very interesting, if not uh, scary, idea because a lot of us, you know, we are a okay with buying a console once and not needing to buy it constantly over and over again. And a lot of us do not have the willpower not to because when they see that the back of the box on that game is going to have the best graphics and even though your system could play that game you know it's not going to look as good as the best graphics on that box you're going to want to upgrade your system and I can totally see why Microsoft would uh, go that route now that's a lot of plastic that's a lot of unused plastic that's a lot of extra consoles going around so it's going to definitely change the way we think of the hardware life cycles. It's no longer going to be five, six, seven years, eight years in the Xbox 360's case, but it is definitely going to make us reevaluate the way we look at these things because one system is probably just going to be the last system. You know, the Xbox One will probably just become Xbox again. They'll stop calling it Xbox One, it'll just be called Xbox. And the future PlayStation will just be called PlayStation. Future Nintendo system will be called something weird. But uh, that's the way it's going. I'd like to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, what do you think of new hardware every single year? And possibly leasing and paying for a new console every two years or so. Let me know comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, as always. Subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.